I spoke at this convention and A Rod, you know, the baseball player, yeah, nice, he spoke yeah. there. And one of the things he said is like athletes get a lot of deal flow. He's only giving his perspective. Yeah, because yeah. he's A Rod. Because he's A Rod. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> gonna try something different switch up the format a little bit and uh, take you guys on a little ride on life after the league we have a special guest here today and a good friend of ours big friend of the show big friend uh i mean this man i want to say was the first person to ever step inside our store before the doors say, were yeah. open he was our first purchase he was yep, our first yep. purchase yeah. so uh i want to kindly welcome our good friend Kayvon frazier yeah, <laughs> uh, Kayvon is a former NFL player, mm -hmm. uh, safety, yep, yep, and yep. Um, he recently just retired uh, at the end of this last season. And so uh, obviously his life has gone through a lot of turbulent changes when you're adjusting from moving after the league into civilian life. And he's done an excellent job over the last couple years of converting and I just it only made sense to bring him on and and just talk about the situation I think it's always intriguing to be able to hear uh, from professional athletes from a behind the scenes standpoint as you, we get to watch you guys on the field week after week but we don't really get a lot of the ins and outs of the business aspect and the things that really go on behind the scenes so we're excited to have you here chop it up talk business talk life and just uh, see where this goes so um, right off the rip, I have to know, when you're an NFL player in the league, what is the hardest part of just daily operations? What are the struggles of being an NFL player? Man, honestly, um, and bro, I appreciate y'all for having yeah, of me. Course, bro. Of course, of course. Bro, bro, what y'all have done, bro, is <laughs> crazy, you know, and... <laughs> And, and y'all said I was the first one. I was actually the first one to you buy it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But I I seen it from the ground up. I yeah. seen from the warehouse. Yeah. Because you used to shop yeah. with us at the warehouse. Back yeah, in the I was day. telling Scotty, you know, when we was grabbing coffee, I was like, bro, that shit is dope. It's dope to see, you know, what y'all done. And I know we don't, you know, we all moving and super busy. So I know we don't see each other or talk a lot, but y'all know it's always love. Definitely you know? not out of like, sight, out of mind. Nah, yeah, 100%, 100%. I feel like we talk about like how my conversation um, the other day with Seneca Wallace, you know, turned into talking about yeah. you. I feel like I bring you up any opportunity when people talking about gyms and things like that. 100%. Always got to shout out my boy. Yeah, and I hope y'all feel the same. I, I mean, yeah. every time somebody asks yeah. about some urban or any, the best shoe store, clothing yeah. store, y'all yeah. know I sent them here. Yeah. I mean, yeah. did, did you bring Cheeto to us? Was Cheeto, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yo, yeah. Yo. you brought Cheeto to us. Cheeto. Shout out Cheeto. J. Lou. I was going to say, yeah. Jordan, Jordan Lewis. Jordan Lewis. 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 Which is actually that. has turned into a great relationship yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah. Man. We should definitely be getting him on here. We, should, yeah. we need to. Yeah. yeah, he'll do it too. He'll, yeah. he'll, 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 yeah. he'll for sure He's do it. He's a very genuine person. But man, man, honestly, man, the hardest thing for the NFL players, well, probably all players, is really trying to figure out who you really are. You know, man, we, we go through all life um, battling this thing of finding what our real identity is, is because mm -hmm. all we looked upon or, or our peers and everybody look at us of what we do and not really who we are. Right. So after after we done or whenever the game gets stripped from us, I mean, it's going to happen to everybody. Um, they go through this identity crisis. And, you know, other people might come over here and be like, oh, yeah, you know, it's the fans, it's the business of the NFL and all that stuff. Yeah, that shit's hard, right? But really trying to figure out who you are as a person mm -hmm. and not, you know, have it classified to be about what you do. Just a football yeah, player. Just, yeah, 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 bro. Like, that's the that's the toughest part, you know? So when you're done and when you're not, like, seen as this significant player or NFL player in the city anymore – if you didn't do a good job of building relationships while you was playing, you know, you kind of really behind everybody because in all reality, like money is cool, but what really like, you where's know, the substance? Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, money yeah, really yeah, ain't yeah, shit when, yeah. you, when you really think about it. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So does it feel like the clock is ticking from the minute you get into the NFL? It's just like trying to figure out what the next move is. Cause at any given moment you could get injured and then you're gone. Yeah. You're just on the couch waking up. Yeah. Don't yeah. really know what to do. Yeah. Yeah. What, what college did you go to? I went to central Michigan. Central so Michigan. Super small school. Yep. Uh, super underrated coming out. Um, 
and I was able to play six years. But to your question, I mean, I wish people really felt like the clock is ticking. But, you know, in all reality, people think they're going to be in there forever. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. But that You're time comes from everybody, bro. Like, like, I'll, like, I'll get to it later. I'll I figure like it out. It depends yeah. on the position you play as to the longevity of, of ball. Mm-hmm. Think, like you know, quarterbacks usually stick around for a, a lot longer than most. The, yeah, but it's harder to get your foot in the door as a as QB. A, yeah, yeah. Cause you're, and even you're and to even one them person. like I mean you seeing like the shit that even Tom Brady going through. Yeah, like, mm-hmm. yeah. you know in his family life like he going like he's still going through this identity crisis. Yeah. you know because everything that everything that people know about him is about football. Because he probably yeah. was about to leave and then he was like, Yeah, I don't know what, what am do. I gonna, what am yeah, I about to do? Yeah. Drew Brees yeah. went through it. You yeah. Just, you see, he was trying to come back and play. Yeah, he came. I was gonna say, what am I gonna do? He came back. Yeah, yeah he came yeah, back. Exactly. He left and he was like, got home and he was like, like, all right, I don't know what to like, do. Right. All I know is football. Let me go back. You know. So, yeah. so yeah. when you were playing in the league, was yeah. there anything on the back end, like school classes, books? Like, was there yeah. anything that you were steadily keeping your mind flowing and yeah. building and learning? When you, I were- mean, I, I've always done a good job of building relationships. You know. Yeah. Whether it was at restaurants or, you know, with you guys and just talking to people, I've always done that very, very well. Uh, I did, it wasn't no intention behind it. You know, I didn't know what I was doing at the time. Yeah. But I always done a good job doing it. And then, you know, I had the charity. I had the foundation. I was doing a lot of work in the community that definitely helped now since I'm on the business side. You know, it gave me a lot of principles that I was able Absolutely. to yeah. easily, transfer. yeah, to transfer and apply. You know, I was able to lead people to get in front of groups right. and stuff and became like a super, well, not super, but became a well-known person in the community. So when I was done, I was able to, you know, uh, transition easier than other people would. A have, smooth right? transition. Yeah. Smoother. It's smoother. Right? Okay. Yeah, it's smoother. <laughs> smoother. I mean, I went through it, bro. I went through it a little bit. Yeah. But um, at the end of my career, after, you know, I got released from the Bengals. Mm-hmm. And when I got picked up by the, in that phase after I got released from the Bengals, that's when I was going through it a little bit. You know, yeah. I was real anxious trying to figure out what's next. I already had a location, a gym. But... Even with that one gym, I was still like trying to figure out what's yeah. next. Like yeah. Yeah. I'm thinking you, about opening up a restaurant. I think I tapped in with you a couple of times mm-hmm. about, you know, something. I was about to buy Bitcoin and try to hold it, yeah. right? Yep. You know, I was. Oh, I, that would have been a disaster right oh now. Oh my God. He was telling us when we were getting coffee, <laughs> oh he said that God. you were the first person back then yeah. to get him a long the, time uh, ago. A long time ago. Yeah, yeah. He was telling me when that shit was like at six or three thousand. Rem- like, and I remember it because, uh, at the time, I didn't have any money to invest in Bitcoin, but Larry was in, smart enough to kind of tap in and learn what he could from it and help others. And we made a couple little plays with the little bit that we, we had did. with the CDs yeah. and stuff like that that we cashed out on with the make fee. Um, but I remember he ca- he cashed in and a couple months went by. I remember you were calling Larry and he's like, what do I do, Larry? Like, do I yep. just, do I cash out? And you're like, yeah. and you're like just chill, I'm, I'm like, bro, like, just chill. It's, but it wasn't even that much money at the time, <laughs> no, though. It's just, no. bro, this shit was foreign to everybody. Yeah, no one knew what it was. You know, didn't nobody yeah. know what it was. But and what a roller coaster ride we've seen crypto. <laughs> oh, I'm just thinking about they where it's crazy. gone since then in these yeah. last four or five years. The and, crazy uh, thing is we were all kind of smart enough to get in it at all those different phases and yep. now it's interesting on like where it's about to go i'm too scared I'm i can sc- take yeah. i can take my money somewhere else right now and be completely fine with flipping it and making yeah. making yeah, money bro. at the safe way and here's the crazy thing i'm comfortable with crypto and i'm still like yeah hands that's off how, right that's now. how i am too but i'm i, I think I'm comfortable, more comfortable though, because I got into the NFT thing yeah. and I made a lot of money flipping those NFTs. So it's just sitting there and I'm like, I didn't really like put my money correct, into it. it correct, just, I got lucky. I put 20 How that market it. now? How the NFT market I, now? I, 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 I stopped Ooh. even looking at oh, okay, cool, it. I got cool, rid cool. of everything though. Okay. Oh, you're chilling then. I got rid of everything. Yeah, he made some flips. Yeah. I made yeah. some He made some, made some flips. flips. Yeah. Like, like, yeah. like put money down on the bins and turn around and got it right yeah. back. Yeah. Yeah. I made some flips. I got gifted a couple of NFTs that I think I sold for like 21,000. Oh yeah, you tapped in. Like crazy stuff that I got lucky on. Right, right. So And I think my the reason it was like that for us early on is because when Scott and I didn't have any money we would try to figure out ways to get it mm-hmm. and what do people do when they have money right and I think that has played very heavily into why we've been able to grow and build the way that we have because when we had nothing we were just trying to figure out how to how to get it yeah. and what to do with and it when we do we get it yeah. and now it's just like second nature what's funny bro, is bro, but now since y'all made money i mean i know you realize how 
simple it is to absolutely. to make money. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. The absolutely. only shitty part is like we made like we did like a 15k flip. And then all we did was pay a debt off, and then we didn't yeah. see any of it. Yeah. <laughs> we were yeah. just back to being even broke, like yeah. not as broke, even, but yeah, no yeah. money yeah. still. Yeah. But it's just that's like, it goes, but that's like little things you learn when you're coming up and you're trying to figure out the next move. It's like some people think that these quick, it's not considered a quick flip, but like investing into those things where overnight there could yeah. be success is the right way. But a lot of times, like we have to learn, us three, learn that what we know the most is the better investment. And for us, it's like 100%. the shoes yeah. and certain things like that. Because we have people that reach out to us all the time, like, I got this idea, I got this investment, and it makes yeah. sense, but I'm not familiar with it. And if I'm yeah. not familiar 100%. with it, then it's a risky bet. And so we've done plays, like while you're in the league, you were doing Bitcoin. While yeah. we've been doing what we're doing, we've done other things, and it just never works out the right way. But it seems like you knew what would work because of what you're passionate about, mm -hmm. which is the yeah. gym. Right, and it's actually right. working out for you. Mm -hmm. Right, bro. Everybody got their gifts, bro. God gave yeah. us all gifts and niches to tap into. It's up to us to find them. But right. when people get spread out too thin and try to invest in all these different things, I mean, it's not bad to invest in. To diversify. You know, to you diversify. Have, yeah, 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 but yeah, if you're yeah. actively trying to manage and oversee it and try <laughs> to run it and you know what I'm saying? If you it's got 10 much. different it's businesses and you the CEO of all of them. Yeah. Can't. Some gonna give, it can't you know. Work. Yep. Yeah, it can't work. So yeah, yeah. I think that's what you, what, what y'all did great is keep reinvesting back in your main business, mm -hmm. yeah. which is it's obviously the, only the thing best that works, part. right? Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah and we know it works. From the shoe game never gonna go down, though. No. You know what I'm saying? No. Everybody always gonna want shoes. Everybody, yeah. bro. Always, and everybody. It's one of those things where, even from an investment standpoint, we look at people will bring us these deals, and they're like, "Yeah, just invest this, and you can get." 15% back over, over the next three, yeah. years. three years. <laughs> like traditional, like, traditional bro, investments. Traditional I will, investments. I will buy a hundred thousand dollars worth of shoes and I'll have that back in 12 days. Yeah. The traditional investments are like for people that don't know how to make money, but just like, yeah. just yeah. like you said, once what you, you figure out in, how to do it yeah. and you know how to make money, mm -hmm. your best investments yourself. At the same time like, though, you know? I hate people playing with my money. Like yeah. I, I, if I'm putting my money in somewhere, I better have my hand in the pot. Yeah. I'm not just going to just flaunt over some money to somebody no. in hopes that they know what they're doing with my cash. Like, <laughs> yeah. I don't do yeah, that. No, that's that's no. the worst. I got to be able to see it, to see yeah. something. But a lot, you know rich, a lot of rich, a lot of rich, rich people do it that way, though. And it works. It works. So how, how does that apply to players? Do you guys have a lot of people that? Because I feel like players mm. get approached a lot of times by like, you know, about come that. open yeah. this wing stop or like Man, invest yes no. in this thing. Like, yes and no. You know what I'm saying? Have you ever been offered like um, some crazy yeah, shit? Yeah, there wasn't like no Uber stocks that crossed your desk at some point nah, when it was bro. just like this unknown. Thing. Bro, so I spoke at this convention and A-Rod, you know, the baseball player, yeah, nice, he spoke yeah. there. And one of the things he said, and I was like, bro, you don't even understand, bro. You know, and one of the things, and I don't mean to call him out. So, you know, and this is not doing that. But and one of the things he said is like athletes get a lot of deal flow, right? He He's only giving his perspective. Yeah, because yeah. he's A-Rod. Because yeah, he's, he's A-Rod. A -Rod. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. how many athletes is, is yeah. in that position? Right, not bro, many. That's, that's like literally the one percent of the one percent. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like Dak Prescott might, right? Yeah, or yeah. Zeke and all Zeke, those yeah, guys, yeah. but LeBron's and right. Yeah, but the how many names. of the people who make it to the NFL or NBA yeah. or MLB is in now and in that position? You only get a couple yeah. of those players per team, right? Yeah. So right, that's, right. that's less like than a like hundred people. I feel Jordan like Brand, in the entire league. Yeah. Jordan yeah. Brand's only signing a handful a year. Yeah. If that you feel you what know? I'm saying? So the investments that we get in. It's like ones from our uncles or, yeah, you know, yeah, the yeah. people who we associate ourselves around. Yeah, right, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's no, like, people not about to come and bring investments to you if you don't have a relationship mm -hmm. with them. I mean, most of the time, that's where it comes from. Yeah. Or you being this big time, big name person, right? So yeah. that's a false narrative that people try to portray on us. Yeah. Um, that really only only that one percent of the one percent really, really, yeah, getting, yeah, those, yeah, really yeah. getting that deal. Right. Did right. you does your college degree had let me go back. <laughs> what you were doing in college, when you were playing ball in college and you were getting a degree at that time, what was your mind state in terms of like, let me get this degree so that when I'm done, like I can do yeah, this? Yeah, does it like, apply? What, what, what my degree you see don't got shit to do with anything. Okay, <laughs> that's, <laughs> that's what I was getting at. Yeah, don't got Neither shit. Does so, my dad. Bro, yeah. bro, I sat my, I sat my lady, uh, I sat the, uh, the advisor down yeah. after like my second year or like in the middle of my second year. And I was like, hey, I'm going to the NFL 
And she kind of busted out laughing. I was like, all right, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> like, but I was like, excuse my language if it's not. Nah, nah, yeah, 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 yeah. But I was like, hey, I'm going to the NFL, so I need to graduate in three and a half years. What's the easiest way to get there? What's the easiest way to graduate in three and a half years? Right. You know, we start going through all these uh all these like um, the majors. Programs and, yeah, the yeah. programs mm-hmm. and the majors mm-hmm. and what you should major in. And I was already in sports management at the time. But one thing, I was in sports management, I realized it was nothing about sports. It was all about like the business the side business of it. And I really right. wasn't, and it's crazy because that's what I'm doing now. Yeah. Right? <laughs> so, so I was like, all right, well, I already took classes there, so I'll put that as my minor. Right. But what's the easiest way to graduate? Like just easy classes because I know I'm going to go to the NFL. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I ended up taking child development. Okay. And I don't right. do shit with that now besides yeah. my kids, right? Right, yeah. right. So and even I, it did come child yeah, development. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but I mean, even what you learn in that, like, it, it, it's hard to apply it, what you learn in child development. Yeah. You learn about the phases that kids go through from childhood to adolescence to adults and how they brain and what stuff like that. What is that supposed to be used for? Is that yeah. more for like psychology? For like teachers. Like, or you know, teachers? It's so teachers? broad. It's yeah, such it's a, a broad, broad one. Yeah. yeah. That and that you can go like 20 different ways with, with it. it. Okay. You know, it's you like, can, I'm going to get out the league yeah. and start this daycare. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, yeah, yeah. 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 It, I mean it's, it, it was just such an easy way of graduating. Yeah. You okay. know what I'm saying? And, and, then, and I feel like that's the typical thing as athletes, uh, even in high school sports, it's yeah. like the teachers will kind of like show preference to make sure so-and-so gets to start, <laughs> you know, on Friday yeah. night. And so at the end of the day, I, I feel like that's kind of a, you know, part of the process where the athletes take the easier road because they, especially the yeah. ones that know, I'm going know, for I'm sure. Going. Yeah. 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 No, exactly. Do you think that crippled you from after the league? At all? I mean, and then since you said your minor is now being used towards what you do, but do you wish that you would have gone and picked up something different? Or are you happy? I mean, I think the whole college shit is bullshit. Yeah, yeah. I, dropped out of high, I dropped out of high school. He dropped out of high school. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I mean, I think that's all bullshit, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, I mean, I don't think it crippled me. I think the fact that I was so laser focused only on football, right. mm-hmm. I think that crippled. Yeah. Uh it, I won't say it crippled me because I eventually learned it, but it, but, but, it, it, it but it set me back a little yeah, bit. Yeah, 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 it did. And it other did set people me back could have cri- it, it other, does cripple them. It does yeah. cripple a lot yeah. of people. And then yeah. do yeah. other people that are in the league that you're friends with? Did they do the same route? That's the easy graduate way out and then yeah, go to the league if they graduate. Like, oh, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. But is yeah. that like, like a thing yeah. though? Like our ball players trying to find the easy route out and then just to get straight to the league. Yeah, yeah. 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 I've Hell never yeah. thought of that. Yeah, yeah. no. Nah. I didn't yeah. even what's, know until you're like, what's the quickest way? Yeah, even my dogs in high, back in, you know, in high school, that's right. all my athlete boys, that's how they got. They were in like wood shop class <laughs> yeah. and like just the regular stuff well, that they knew they could just get through easy. I assume a lot of people go to the league too before they even graduate, right? Sure. So they don't even care. So to NFL, get that NFL, you have to do at least two years three. of college. Three years of college. college. So and a lot of people just leave it at the third year and don't even finish yep. some people i mean the oh, wait, top wait, wait, wait. the top people, you don't have yeah. to finish no no i thought you had to finish no uh-huh. no you ain't got to finish in nfl no yeah. or nba i mean i know the you nba you didn't nba, didn't NBA you didn't NBA you NBA they go you, straight to the league you used to yeah, be yeah. able to you now can. you have to do two, two years yeah, okay. LeBron, oh, LeBron, LeBron, lebron went straight one 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 nba yeah yeah yeah, I didn't know the NFL was like that. Though I knew the NBA, See, the NBA just changed it again. Yeah, LeBron, yeah, 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 LeBron, LeBron went straight Kobe, out of Kobe, Kobe, straight Kobe, out of high Kobe, school. Straight, yeah. Um, but now you have to do a minimum. That's why. What's the kid we just met? The super tall kid, Oklahoma City. Oh man. Um, well, you know the NBA just changed it back. Oh my god! Wait, but is that Gonzaga. is that why some kids that are Chet, in college, Chet Holman, Chet, Chet Holman. Yeah. Chet. that's why Chet, he, yo. yeah, Chet, he could have went. He he would have been a straight to, straight the, league, to the league, but, but he, he he wasn't yeah. able to. Yeah. Is that why some kids are in college and they decide to go? Or they consider trying to go to the draft early, yeah. but because that just means they're not going to finish school and they're yeah. just going to go straight yeah. and see if they get picked up. Or? Yeah. Correct. You yeah. talking about the NFL? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So if they declare early, it's right. like after three years. God. You know, but man, you get even some people that's been in school for four years that still didn't graduate. Right. And they're you know just like, it. But yeah. <laughs> yeah. And, like, and a lot of times they don't end up going back. So yeah. it's like, you know, you you did all that time, you spent all that time, wasted it. Yeah. And, you know, taking all these bullshit classes and didn't even get that little didn't piece get the of, paper. Yeah, that bullshit paper. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> What's old boy that just uh <laughs> recently went back and now he just plays golf all the time. He played basketball with LeBron and and 
he had all the flames tattooed on his J.R. Smith. J.R. Smith. 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 He yeah, literally just that. went through this whole pro- process blown. of like going back, finishing he went school. Back and finished. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, he played in college he golf, college golf for, in like yeah. Arizona and like yeah. went back to school, played that's golf tight. in college. Like, that's actually tight. Really tight. Tight. Yeah. So, <laughs> and, and so, and so going back to the question, I, I don't think a lot of athletes finish. I think a lot of them find themselves in a position probably yeah. like J.R. Smith where yeah. it's like, hey, I need to go and do something. But if well, you're doing what Kayvon did and you're networking during your whole career in the league and trying to figure out mm-hmm. either what you're passionate about or what yeah. little school you learned and utilizing that when you get out, that's the main key. It's like, yeah. if you can yeah. find that. So so let's talk about that. You left the league and you had this idea to start a gym. Right, and, right, right. And the gym, the purpose of the gym was to prep younger players for the combine and kind of help prepare them for the league specifically, or is this just a health, fitness? But you had the brand first, right? So I actually started the gym while I was in the league. Mm. Okay, yeah. and then you had the brand as yeah, well. Yeah, I had right. a clothing brand that tagged on with it, but... Right. Well, I started the brand first, and then I started the gym. That's what I thought. It was okay. called Bill Ford Athletics. Right. And the gym was called, and then the brand was Bill Ford Clothing. Um, and obviously, it was some bullshit. Y'all didn't even put it in your store. No, no we had it. Was, yeah, yeah, we had the beanies. Yeah, yeah, we had the beanies. Yeah, the beanies were straight, though. The beanies, the beanies were straight. Yeah, the beanies the were straight. I remember that. The beanies, I think I remember yeah, the beanies. We had all the beanies. The snowflakes. The snowflakes. The snowflakes. Yeah, 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 I remember that. I remember yeah, that. Yeah, but yeah, I had the gym. I started the gym. Man, we was in a 2,000 square foot, just a garage. Like, really... Like literally a shed, kind of. Um, and the reason why I got into it though is because I dealt with a lot of injuries uh, while I was playing. Mm-hmm. And I mean, if anybody who knows the NFL, they don't do a good job of truly like taking care of these players' body. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember it's more you, like a band aid you nah, up and get like, you back out this there. This full hurt. Can I, can I say this? This full yeah, hurt his thumb. Had a broken thumb. And then thumb, he yep. came in. He was, he was talking about. He's like, don't tell anybody though. He's like they don't know. They don't, he's like they don't know it hurts that bad. Yeah, I had a broken at the thumb. Same, if yep. they know that you're, you then know, you're, if you're hurt, then you're they consider you injury prone or yeah. I R. They, they yeah, categorize yeah. you, yep. and if you could technically still play with yep. the thumb being hurt, then it's like why even say anything? Just let for that my shit. first five years, I had five surgeries. <laughs> like literally, my first five, bro. I haven't had a surgery since I got to the league, or till uh, I got to the league. Yeah. Then my first five years, I had five. And like, is that just because of the high level of play, like how, how hard physical it is. and how physical the NFL really is? It was because I was physical. Mm. Gotcha. You know, yeah, I, I think I was the one that was punishing yeah. myself yeah. a little bit. Yeah. In the other person, I mean, they yeah. was probably as a safety. Yeah. As a safety, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, uh, you yeah, know, your job is to dart <laughs> straight at whoever's yeah. got that ball. If I was hitting ball. the same person, Every single time, they would have been way worse than I. They probably yeah. would have had way yeah. more surgeries than I had. Yeah. yeah. But unfortunately, I was hitting different people. People, yeah. So I'm getting the bang. You know but what I'm saying? You're getting yeah. the, the worst yeah. part of it. But yeah, because of that, I partnered with my physical. I mean, I had another partner who was involved as well too. But um, the main person I partnered with was my physical therapist, and we started it about medical first. Mm. So our, that's kind of our model. I mean, it's not medical first. We do training as as well. But the medical is kind of like what stands us apart. Like the root of where. So, like you're is. training exactly. to get to, healthier in terms of to like. To be able uh, to be stronger. Stronger, yeah. yes. Less so is it kind of rehab? A lot of the, well, is we it, do rehab too. Okay, so, you do that also. So we okay. do physical therapy. We do chiropractic services. So, so we have chiropractic services. Got it. And then we, we have massage therapists. Um, and then we do training as well too. So it's like a one-stop shop almost. Yeah, exactly. are all these yeah. different things that the person who comes in there has to pay for? Do they pay for a package? Like, because you get the combine people mm-hmm. in, and then so you cover all the combine everything. is one big package. It's one thing. It's so one big if something package. happens, they the, go to this. The room NFL and then, players is usually one big package. Yeah, okay. The, the MLB players is usually one big package. Um, the NBA one big package. But youth and stuff like that, mm-hmm. that's when it's like a la carte. You, know, you, you do whatever you want. Yeah, yeah, that's how it is at Self Made, where, where I used yeah. to work out right. at. They had different things you could do, but each thing's different from your actual training. Right, right. The having. training is monthly, obviously. Right. Um, and then the PT is by is per session, mm. the chiropractic per session, massage per session. Yeah. And I mean, man, that's that's and that's the business. That's why we're different than a lot of these other facilities. Yeah, they don't yeah. do that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, nobody, nobody really, especially in a Dallas. I was market, about to say this is the first time I've heard of one place doing all of that yeah, under one roof. You right. either you go know? to the gym or you go to, to the, the physical yes, therapist yes, or you yes. go get a right. massage. Yes, you right. can't go P- get all of that. In and one. PT is never like physical therapists and chiropractors never usually work together. We found a model to to where they able to work together, right? If you're an NFL player, right? If you guys are NFL players and y'all come in. Y'all check in with our PT first. Y'all work out. Y'all come back in the PT room, get worked on, 
you know, our PT will send you to the chiropractor. You'll get adjusted. You'll come back and get worked on. Before Maybe get you some do dry any needling. sort of lifting or anything, right? You have to make sure that everything's aligned and good or? Well, it depends. It depends. It's different per person. So, I mean, we, we try to see as many people as we can before the session. Right. Our NFL players, they get PT. They see our physical therapist and our <sighs> chiropractor almost every single day. Okay. You know? That's a difference, too, is they literally get the soft tissue work every day. Mm. And also, so I'm thinking about this from a business standpoint. Obviously, if you just have a gym, then you have the monthly income just from your your monthly uh, dues. Yeah, yeah, paying right, your right, gym right. membership. But I can only assume like when you're talking about like physical therapy and things like that, that's probably like their insurance is covering that. And you're just getting insurance bread no, because they're not paying 100%. for that out of pocket yeah. but now i mean they pay out of pocket they, they got to pay something out of pocket gotcha yeah you yeah, know? yeah but yeah. it's like, a, right. like a those are things that are covered yeah, by your insurance, co -insurance that, yeah. and all that stuff yeah. so tell me this exactly. though do you work side by side with the league at all any of the leagues no nah. no nah. so it's all nah. privately nah. done nah. outside yeah i mean that's something that we eventually might Hopefully, tap into right. that's what i was gonna say is that something you want to do or is it is it not make sense to do that to keep it private you know if you want me to be 100 percent real I don't, I don't know, you okay. know. I feel like the money's yeah. good, I think though. that, is it? Yeah. I feel like, on a lot the, of people, I feel like a lot if of they people, owe money on the first, it's going to just be people cut, pay right? to, actually, A lot of people pay the NFL just to be in partnership mm -hmm. with them. You know yep. what I'm saying? Yeah. I don't yeah, have to. don't need that, yeah. Yeah, I don't need that. You don't need that. You know sure. what I'm saying? We, like last year, 2023, I think we seen 300 NFL athletes across the country. And is it growing? You know? It's growing every single season? Every year. Yeah, I mean, bro, I just acquired this business in January. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah, so I'm. I mean, I had the other gym, but from the businesses that I or the business that I acquired. So now we have Prosper, Fort Worth, and Tyler, Texas, and then we have satellite sites all across the country. So right. you so started. I, so we got one, fifteen locations. Okay, okay that was yeah, the question. Crazy. You started with one. Now you got fifteen. So yep. Yep. I know Dallas is known for like. There's like a knee surgeon doctor here that's real popular. You talking about Cooper, Doctor Cooper? I guess. And so a lot of times when athletes are getting hurt they're coming to Dallas to get these surgeries. Are you tapping in with those types of people too? While so a lot here? of the surgeons, a lot of the surgeons usually have their own physical therapy clinic. Mm. Okay. Built in. Built in with them. Okay. You know, yeah. and it makes sense. I mean, why Absolutely. wouldn't you? Yeah. You yeah. Know yeah. It's the same yeah. module. Yeah. You're doing one yeah. stop. So. Yeah. Yeah. But usually like, like even Dr. Cooper, like if he got a really extreme case or a high level athlete, he'll send them to us, nice. you know? Um, so if he have NFL players, sometimes he'll send them to us. Cause, That's cool. I mean, we we are truly the best in the sports medicine sector. Yeah. But I mean, obviously, his his grandmas or everyday moms who just tweaked their ankle and had to get it cleaned yeah, up. Yeah, for sure. They, they'll stay with him. But um, if he got a high level athlete, he usually send them all. Has to us. anybody reached out to you for any sort of like endorsement deals or like collab deals or anything like that? Man, not yet, man. Um, are you open to those? I things? mean, yeah, for sure. I mean, but it it, it got to align with us, and I got to believe in a product or whatever it mm -hmm. is. Mm -hmm. Um, we we got a couple companies because we train like top like a bunch of high end athletes like Patrick Mahomes and all that stuff. So a couple of his companies that's tapped in with him, they obviously want to be tapped in with us too. You know, because yeah. he trained at our facility. Yeah. So like, uh, like Bio Steel is one of them who we've been in contact with yeah, and been talking to. It just got to make sense though for us. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, for mm -hmm. sure. Because so, I remember you had told me when you first opened. This was like I don't know, maybe two years ago or a year and a half. You had said one of the main focuses is the combine. Like you said, that's not like your bread and butter, but it's like mm -hmm. a big deal every year because. There's a lot of stuff coming into play for you and the business as far as lo being lucrative. I mean, if yeah. I told you that then, I was wrong. Okay. You know, How does it's that, a lot of companies out here that, that close down, you know, be, because that's all they focused on. Imagine only making money eight, eight weeks out of the year. Right. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's what the combine is. Yeah. It's only eight weeks out of the year, and that's the only time you're making money. But we, we still do a big push. You know, you said that people year. would fly in and then they pay whatever the fee is. You guys do the combine with right. them and then right. train them to get ready. Right. Uh, you know, you know, hundred percent. I mean, you'll make like, you know, a few thousand off each combined player. Right. But but you get to that can't be your. That's you can't you know, sustain a business off of yeah, just that. Yeah, yeah, it can't be everything. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And back then, yeah, I probably thought that, but I wasn't as. Uh, this is when you first started. Right. It was when I first that started. That probably was the what, bread and butter. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. the yeah, first, yeah, yeah. It was probably the first that's time what everybody you saw else. Some, something really big happen for you. Right, like right, and that's that. what everybody else was doing too. So Exos, that's what they focus on the most. MJP, mm -hmm. that's what they did before they closed down. Um, Sports Academy, they doing it like that's what they focus on. Right. We special because we like super diverse. Right, you did the PT now so and all that PT, other stuff. We did the PT, the chiropractor, right. the massage. We got MLB yeah. players. Like 
Shit, I just left our Fort Worth facility. I think we got 50 MLB players in there. Crazy. 50, 40 or 50. It's, it's 40 or 50. Yeah, it, right. regardless, that's right. crazy. So, yeah. Right, so we got MLB. We got we seen over 300 NFL players. We got a huge adult fitness. I think we, in our whole, of the three facilities, I think we got like close to 300 adult fitness uh, people who's in our adult yeah, fitness yeah. program. We, we do youth. We got, shit, we own part of a volleyball team. So, you know, we're definitely lo a, a lot more diverse. The than word other spreading, companies. it sounds yeah, like, you know, right, within right. all those high level You need to get groups. into pickleball. That's apparently. what yeah, Bruh, I just saw hey, that Apparently, right now. that's what Mark Cuban just, just did. got into it. Pickleball apparently. fire! Bro. I just played that today. Did that you? Shit was, that oh, you played that? That's yeah. fun. I, I, it looks I, fun. I went to Chicken and Pickle. You what played the fuck that shit? Is that? Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, I've heard of this. That's I've heard a fire of this, bro. concept. Chicken and Pickle sounds. Okay, it's a huge facility, top notch, five star. You went there? Food, drinks, entertainment, and they have pickle courts. It's called Chicken and Pickle, and it's like this top. All right, I'm Think going. top golf, but pickleball. But pickleball. Bro, it's I'm a going. fire yep. concept, bro. Yeah. yeah. So uh, apparently uh, just overseas, they're doing this big push. Uh, LeBron bought a pickleball mm -hmm. team. Cuban bro, Cuban just started start the private Kevin pickleball. Durant. Yeah. I was about to say. It, it's, it's, a, Kevin it's, Durant, a, it's a new Boston. wave, but yeah. I don't know if it's going to stick. They're making a huge push, but I just don't know if it's going to stick. It's going to stick, I think. I was, you do? Well, because, you know, so, so tennis is dope. So right, I just started playing tennis, and tennis, like I feel like the wave – new social media pushes and stuff like that same for golf the way right golf now. and yeah. tennis is yeah. like exploding right yeah, now yeah it is you know pickleball is different because i mean you can be 80 years old and play pickleball right you can't really yeah. with tennis because it's a lot more moving yeah, around yeah. more lateral yeah, lateral yeah it's more lateral movements but pickleball you can play doubles and literally stand, stand in the it, same it, spot it's almost like playing spot. table tennis in a way yeah, right it's like yeah. Pickle, yeah it's like yep but yep. with a bigger it's like, like ping pong but ping pong. Yeah. 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 But a little, Actually, a little yeah. bit bigger yeah yeah, the, yeah, yeah but yeah, not yeah. as big as tennis the private yeah. picklers okay I was. Yeah. it's funny Scott because I was like I was trying to think I was like damn we need to do a, a private uh, selection pickleball and I was like private pickles and I was like that don't sound right <laughs> yeah oh yeah private pickles I just imagine like a pickle dressed up as like an army private pickle reporting for duty <laughs> yeah. I honestly don't even know how to play. I've, it's I've fun seen though. It, so. It's fun. It's very you simple. can play table tennis. I'm sure you can play that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I play ping pong. Yeah. So yeah. It's the same thing, but the it. ball just has to hit the ground first instead yep. of the table mm -hmm. first yep. before you hit it back. Fair enough. Yes. But yeah, the the court is like it's small, right? It's relatively small. Bro, you'll so learn it fast. Like, you'll you'll pick it up fast. Like it's not. Yeah, bro. Maybe we'll have to do an outing at Chicken yeah. and Pickle. Yeah. Sounds yeah. tight. Let's do it. Have a little team tournament. I'm down. We can film it. Yeah. It should be funny as hell. Yeah, I already know. Yeah, yeah. Some of our guys aren't coordinated very well. So <laughs> exactly. It's going to be yeah. hilarious. So uh, dealing with all these different people, you said 300 different people, MLB and everything like that. Are you able to see people bloom, like people coming in that you know are about to be like first round or anything like that and actually work with them hands on and then watch them go to the league and just like yeah. turn up? Like, is there anybody um, specific yet? Or Yes and no, man. It's so hard to, to like – to look at one person and be like, oh, he's going to be yeah. dope. Because, like, honestly, a lot of people that I didn't think that of turned out to be great. Like, yeah. we have a guy, I forget his name, but he plays for the Dolphins. He trained at our Fort Worth facility, and we acquired the business right during the middle of their combine. Okay. And he was undrafted, um, small school kid, probably D2 or something like that. And, I, I mean, training, I, I wouldn't have thought nothing of this kid, right? You know, everybody's kind of in shape yeah. as they yeah, train. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I'm yeah. saying? So. You can't really see like the true football or true skills as they're training, mm -hmm. but he he went off um, and balling for the Dolphins balling right now. He played yeah. corner. Damn, I forgot his name. If I, I just, think of it, I, I just yeah, think it'd be so cool yeah. to be there for the baby steps, yeah, yeah. just to like kind of yeah. witness it or, or at least be a part to help get him ready to explode when yeah. he gets, out, gets yeah. in or the even people when they're like first year or second year, and then you see them progress, like. Yeah. You know, that's you great. have people that yeah. after the combine come back and hundred percent, hundred percent, bro. It's about the atmosphere and the vibe. Like right. we really like. I got to get down there, but our vibe, bro, yeah. the, bro, the people, our people is, is like really, really good people, and we got a dope ass vibe. When you come into the gym, it's like damn, like this shit, it's just dope. You feel it, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. so you know how y'all can feel energy, yeah, um, vibrations, yeah, yeah, yeah. And all that percent. shit. Yeah, yeah bro, all you about feel it. the energy when you walk into the gym. Everybody talking, everybody smiling. Like the music is same good. goal. Yeah, bro, it's beautiful vibes. Bro. That's awesome. You know what I'm saying? So. Yeah. So everybody comes back, bro. Bro, the the best thing about our business, yeah, the combine is cool, but you know we get guys that train at Exos, train at all these other places, and come to us for their actual training 
after the the NFL combine, yeah. you know, I, but yeah, it's because sure, yeah. our people is good. You know, our people is great people, bro. I've been yeah. to a few gyms in, mm-hmm. in Dallas. I need to come check you guys out there. Maybe yeah, you just do like up. an episode or something. Yeah, of like a, what it's like to train like an NFL player. <laughs> yes. bro, bro. Yeah. And we compete. Yeah, yeah I would like up. that. Yeah, 100%. I would like yeah. that we'll take, we'll bring Izzy. We'll bring Jordan. Jordan. Yeah, yeah, we can play pickleball, down. bro. I got, I got a basketball court in the Prosper room. We can play pickleball. I got a pickleball net. Private picklers, big Michelle, I just fry some chicken, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Chicken and pickles. Yeah, chicken and pickles. Chicken and right. pickles. Yeah. So where do you where do you see yourself with that company? Um, you know, 100%. in the future in five years, like what do you what's yeah. the goal? I mean, you know, I don't really put a goal on it because I mean a lot of people when they put goals on shit, they just stop, right? It's, yeah. put, it's, it's like putting a ceiling on I like shit. That. Yeah, a cap, right, yeah. Right. Yeah. So I mean, objective is a better word, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? But I mean, honestly, um, I want to, like, we're we going to take it nation, nationwide eventually, yeah. you know, because right now we have satellite sites that's nationwide, you know, and Explain where we, that. so our satellite sites is basically, if you think about our gym, we manage and run everything, like mm. the training, the physical therapy, chiropractic, you know, all that. Our satellite sites, we help them manage their medical. Mm. So we help them input our medical system inside of their gyms. Gotcha. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. It's like kind of like the, the back end. It's like the back end. Oh, okay. It's the back end, but yeah. it's also like our system, bro. Our system the, is yeah, dope yeah, yeah, because it's yeah. like, you know, so like I said, like it's like this huge teamwork aspect that like all these facilities really don't even know how to they incorporate. They don't know how to do it. Yeah, yeah, they don't know how to do it. And it look hectic. Mm-hmm. You know, you walk in and imagine all these tables and it's players on the table. I can like one physical or one physical therapist and one chiropractor can treat like five or six people, but it's because they have teamwork, you yeah. know. She'll work on you first. You know what I'm saying? You'll go do your exercises. You'll get dry needle. You'll see the chiropractor. She, he'll get soft tissue by her massage therapist. Boom. As soon as you're done dry needling, she'll she'll give you what soft tissue. Is bring dry it. Yeah, I need to know what dry needle Gotta is. Gotta know. It's kind of dry... like ex, uh, acupuncture. Dog, you know I had it done to my shoulder. That shit, is, that shit works shit like a charm, bro. started fucking twitching. Yeah, I was yeah. like, holy shit. Yeah, because they twitched the needle. And then she took the that suction cup and she brought that pressure down yep. and out of my fucking hand. And it, bro, that shit felt yep. weird as fuck. <laughs> but it worked. I did it a couple times. Yeah, yeah, it worked. Helped. It took, I had, there was like, my muscle was connecting to my shoulder. And so when I was doing exercises, it was putting pressure on my shoulder when I was doing chest exercises. So she had to separate the two deltoid I, or well, i guess that's the right term my shoulder muscle separated it from my chest muscle because they were kind of like Getting pulling to, yeah, and so she was trying yeah. to like separate it yeah so it's different tissues and i was paying the sessions every time but god i, I remember you told hurt. me how like how much pain it was when you did hurt. it you know, dry needle and hurt a little yeah. bit yeah, yeah. No, it, yeah. Do. it do but if you in pain yeah like it, it, like yeah. it's almost <laughs> like it a stress hurts. reliever yeah. when it's happening because exactly. you know it's like you know it's working the pressure's coming out yeah that's kind of our system. So we're able to help other people implement that system. So possibly you know? those satellite sites could turn into possible yeah. facilities, right? You know? Yeah. Because some of them is inside of a facility. Right. Mm-hmm. And they'll come to our facility. They'll come to our uh, summits that we put on. Right. And we usually do about two a year. Is, and, they, and they'll come and they'll be shocked by our actual facility, our yeah. setup, our flow of our facility, yeah. you know, how our weights is organized and how it's put into yeah, place. It's a science to the way it's, I, it's all a science set to it. I think right. that is something that you guys need to look into uh, to be able to. Exactly. Like, is there Man, a way I to, like, know. I don't know. Is about there a way that? to lock that well, in? You want, you I mean, keep them I mean you think about the one gym that was in a performance space that franchised is yeah. D1, yeah. right? And where are they at now? Right. You know, yeah. it's really not that big of a company anymore. I mean, you. I don't want to lose control. I mean, I'm not a control freak. I'm not yeah. narcissistic, but you just don't when, want it to get too hard to not be what you, what it is. I don't. Yeah, I don't want it to be watered down. Yeah, especially yeah. we train elite level athletes. Yeah, and you like, know that your squad and the people what that about, you're working with are yeah. doing top notch work. Exactly. Exactly. You can't vouch for what's happening in some other city. Exactly. But could you sell a package where like you could like you want to learn how we do things? Spend yeah. X amount of money. We come out there. We tell you guys how to operate. Yeah, that's like consulting, and then, like, right. like a curriculum. Like, and like that's kind of what own. we're doing. And that's yeah. kind of what we're doing right. already, but a little bit more than consulting. Like a like, travel team, though. That we're, we're, do we're that. a little bit more hands on. Yeah, because it sounds like the software that that whole back end process could be a very valuable business model oh, it as is. well. And then, it is. yeah, I we we know a guy who made millions and millions of dollars off of he owns the software that like every Domino's pizza uses around the United States. And so he, it was just yeah. a software. He play. sold it. Yeah. 
The multiples on that probably crazy. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Or or actually I I take that back. He didn't sell it. You guys know who oh, I'm talking didn't. about, right? No. Is old boy from uh when we do all the donation stuff. Oh. Yes, 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 yes. I didn't know that. Yes, I didn't know that. He he is so he still owns the software company and he says he basically <laughs> makes royalties off Crazy of every money. single location. Pro yeah. software and tech. Yeah. Bro, yeah. Every he single, sell that shit. Yeah. Yeah. Sell it, bro, he can get thirteen of his EBITDA yeah. probably. Like it's probably like between thirteen and twenty X. Yeah. yeah. The multiple on Yeah, that. the multiple Absolutely. on the EBITDA, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Front, I should okay. definitely try to think of something like that to yeah. help capitalize. Crazy. Yeah, bro. You, you, you get that 100%. and then other other gyms that are popular or successful, you know, your bigger your ones, system. your twenty four mm-hmm. hour, and then maybe they have a and then they can start to implement yep. that. That yeah. that's a software. And we play. actively looking for other gyms to acquire though. That's that's that's, yeah. that's kind mm-hmm. of our model yeah. is to acquire other gyms because we got a product that's fire. Yeah. And I truly believe our product is the best product in this industry. That anybody, you know what I'm saying? That anybody could even create yeah. or I mean, there's local know, gyms here that I know that could probably use that kind benefit of benefit from it. Yeah, yeah. Like self made's a really good example. I feel like they could use something like that. How how big is self made? And I th- I think their motto is completely different though. All of they our all, people they're are all salary. separate. They're all exactly. uh, so you got uh, ten free different agents, I guess, or whatever you'd say. They pay for their space. Yeah, you got ten different trainers. That's that's, that's they're that's not all a, got their own business under okay, one roof. So you know what I'm saying? So how does yours work then? Everybody on salary. They're all part of the biz, part of the. Yeah. That's unheard of, and that's why you're saying the teamwork is different okay. in that situation. So let me exactly. speak on that then. So I I've trained at a lot of gyms, and sometimes I think the gym etiquette is a. Uh, off because everyone's their own boss so it's like i ain't 100%. gotta pick these weights up like yeah. Yeah. those were my clients yeah. and so everyone's just kind of got this chip on their shoulder because i'm my own boss but at the end of the day y'all are all under these four walls yeah yeah and so at the yeah. end of the day it's like you your weakest link is is acquired by your 100%. team so yeah. if you don't pick up those weights you're messing up this right. person and messes just, up and, me and then when like, someone comes in that wants to join and they just see it just kind of yeah. unorganized it mm-hmm. just kind of puts a, a foul taste mm-hmm. so i think what you're doing and that and the crazy part is that it's working is mind blowing to me because i feel like some people would think that's a cap but at the same time they're if they would do it your way they would have a better environment at their workplace and know that they're guaranteed X amount if everybody just follows suit. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. but the thing the, is, everybody got egos. You yeah. Know? A lot of these trainers. Especially yeah. trainers. A Especially lot of trainers, trainers got egos. Especially you know? trainers. So now, I mean, I got a good solid core of trainers mm-hmm. that now everybody else who I hire, I don't even look for, like like we just had an interview uh, today w- with this girl um, and um, we offered her, you know, she fresh out of college. She actually still in college, but she graduated, she in her master's program. Right. And she probably not, you know, a top notch trainer who know everything and who can program a fire ass workout. But she's just down yet. to be a team yeah. player. But she a, you know, you she can a develop. team player and she a great person. Right. Yeah. You know, you can teach people you how to train. Us, that. You know, yeah. I got a fire. We like we got we got good trainers yeah. who's who's good programmers who can teach her how to train and coach. Mm-hmm. But you can't teach people how to you be can, good yes, people. You, yeah. can't. you know That's what I'm right. saying? Can't. That's you right. Can't. Right. So. My point is like a lot of these trainers got egos, mm-hmm. you know, and that's what it comes with. You know, the training that industry the comes with ego. Exactly. Yep. Exactly. Because they think they can do it on their own. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Way stronger yeah. And this with industry, like-minded you can't people. Can't do it on your own. In a bro. lot of industries, you you're can't way do it stronger on your own. with like-minded yeah. people. Exactly. You know, a lot I'm of saying. industries, you can't do it you can't. by yourself. Yeah. And so yeah. I think that's really cool that you guys do that as far mm-hmm. as just creating that energy. But at the yeah. same time, like, is it a walk-in type of place? Like a walk-in where people can walk in and sign up and, and join? 100%. And then yeah. if they do, do you guys equally put them with certain trainers? Like how would that work? I guess since everyone's making the same amount mm-hmm. of pay or however the pay is, right. you guys are just now advertising the gym as a whole and not like separately for each trainer. 100%. So anyone that comes in, it's like, okay, you get this person, you're going to go Well, no, so guy. everybody like, coaches their, everybody has their own niche. You know, everybody coaches their own thing. type right. of group of people. So we have some people who's training who's better at coaching, high intensity who's better training. at coaching the NFL players. So mm, he's coaching okay. all the NFL players, right? You know, it's a couple. It's it's a couple of them at each facility who's coaching all the NFL players, and then we have an MLB coordinator. So it's like specialists. So, yeah. So how yeah. our so how our stuff work is we got um so every facility has managers, you know, and and I, and most of my managers train. I have a GM who's in, who's involved in all the facilities. Right. He doesn't train. You know, he helps a lot of stuff on the back end, the relationships, partnerships and stuff like that. He does a lot of admin work as well, too. Um, Then um, I have performance directors at each facility. Right. Mm -hmm. And these is like my top 
guys who program almost all the workouts, right? So I have like I have one program director in Prosper, have two in Fort Worth, and I don't have any in Tyler. But we still trying to build up somebody to become that program director. It's just not there yet. Yeah, I'm letting the cream cream rise to the top, bro. Like we just acquired this business, went through it, went through a lot of changes. You know, after you acquire a business, you go through a lot of changes. People buy in. The ones that don't buy in, they'll be out. We bring in new talent and stuff like that. So that's the phase that we're just getting out of now. You got to figure out who that person is that deserves that role. I'm letting the cream rise to the top. Right? Somebody gonna be it. But yeah. But you gotta you gotta show me that's what you're capable of doing. Right. I can't just give you the title. Right. Mm -hmm. Right. I I love that because that's how we are too, man. Yeah. Yeah. You gotta work for that kind of shit. Man, you gotta you gotta work for it. Anytime anytime I work for my dad and I'd leave and come back, you put Mm -hmm. me right down at the bottom again. Like work yourself back up. I'd leave, come back, work yourself back up. Like it sucks, but it's like you'll learn. You know, uh-huh. yeah. you, nothing should be given to you. Hundred percent. What, what would you say has been the best investment you've made as a human being? Man, the best investment I made is in knowledge, bro. Yeah, the power you know what of I'm knowledge. Saying? Investing mm-hmm. in your investing in myself, continuing to learn, mm-hmm. investing in myself, investing in relationships. Mm-hmm. You know, investing in my family, and then you know, if we're talking about something that you know, like. Something that's tangible yeah. is my business, obviously. Yeah, yeah. the gym. Um, yeah. Is the gym. That's tangible. But knowledge, relationships, my family, those are key relationships. That's the real power. I, I look I at that. Yeah. If I didn't have any of that stuff, you none of this of wouldn't even yeah. happen yeah. or been able to. I wouldn't be able to control anything if I didn't have my wife holding it down at the crib. Uh, yeah. right? Love that. Yeah. You feel what I'm saying? Shout so, out wifey. Yeah. 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 She, <laughs> Shout out she dope, bro. Yeah, she Big dope friend of the show. Him. Big friend. <laughs> <laughs> the whole family is. Yeah. I feel like... Some people don't understand that. To me, I think reputation. So, like, yeah. my reputation is is a big deal to me. Some people are like, I don't care what people think about me. Like, well, you should. You should. You should 100%. always care what people think about you. Not to the point where it dictates how you genuinely move. Yes. <laughs> yeah, there's a But in a to sense it. to where, like, you should know that that's the building blocks that's just going to take you further. Where yeah. your name could get brought up and that person could connect you with another person. Like, Seneca Wallace. Yeah. With you, like, you know, yeah. the reputation. Yeah precedes who you are as a human and i i take that as a second to sacrifices as like one of the things that i think is where i'm strong at and what got me further absolutely a very and, important and to, thing to add on to that when i was speaking to seneca wallace when he when we had that conversation and i immediately called cave and i was like bro you have to call seneca <laughs> like he's a great guy yeah. he's a great businessman yeah. he's a great entrepreneur he was a great quarterback like all of these reasons like please tap in with yeah. that man. so yeah. It, yeah. you're exactly right if seneca didn't have that type of reputation with me if then that conversation would have been it, cut yeah i would have just left it alone but the fact yeah. that he's been so a1 and the way that he upholds himself with dignity and respect and he's just a good guy and so it just it yeah, was easy that, for me to make that i made that phone call immediately he did after he did. i yeah. got off the yeah. phone yeah. Like, that's, really did. and that's one of those things where like i tell people all the time that don't know me and we'll have conversations and i'm like you could go anywhere in the city and bring up all three of our names and no one can really say anything about it's it. solid yeah, yeah. 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 Like, I'm, 100% I'm, solid. A1. I'm good in every neighborhood all yeah. the barbecues we've had that conversation <laughs> before but it's like it because i take pride in the way that i carry myself how mm-hmm. my team carries themselves like like it's a, re- a reflection is a big deal to to me and I anybody that I associate with has to be in that same you know realm or area that I am mm-hmm. or mindset because I feel like it's so much more powerful when when you have a team of people who care about the way they care themselves and also have a great reputation because one sour apple can spoil the whole bunch mm-hmm. easily yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and or you know uh you are who you hang around and yeah. I, people say that all the time Man, it's, a, it's a really bro, big deal. it rubs up Bro, that's you. a big deal, bro. I heard a better quote, bro, and I forgot where I heard this. I think it's these lectures I'll be listening to. He was like, in five years, you will make the average of your five closest best friends. So are the five people you hang around the most. Right. You will make an average salary of the five people you hang around the most. Yeah, it's you know true. what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, bro, I thought about that. Show. I was like, okay, I, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I got to change my circle. <laughs> yeah. Come on, come you're gone. on. <laughs> you're gone. You're gone. Because that's gone. that goes hand in hand where they say like. Uh, you hang around four millionaires, you'll, you'll be, be the fifth one. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. 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 Yeah. Right. Yeah. It's just that mindset. You wake it up is. differently. Like things the grind are looking, is different. Things are looking good for you, Michael. <laughs> 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 hey, bro, hey, bro, the conversations is different too, though. They are. You know, it goes from oh, how many bottles do we pop into? What we invested yep. in? Yes. You know, yep. that <laughs> yeah. that becomes the competition. Like, yeah, bro, we can't. You know what I'm saying? We can't keep having these same old 
conversations over and over and over. And that's why I love what y'all doing here because y'all really changing the narrative for even the shoe game. Right. Like, yeah. you know, imagine having a podcast talking about what we're talking about now with with the shoe up there, though. Yeah, you feel yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, there's not a lot of people that can do that, right, you yeah. know? Yeah. But it's because y'all tapped in to a different level. You know for what sure. I'm saying? It's not all about, like, shoes to y'all. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, deeper y'all than that. it's deeper yeah. than that. Yeah. Like, the, the conversation starts like that, and then the feeling of the bubble is different. Yeah. Exactly. So yeah. That's kind of what that... You yeah. know, and it's that's what ways. it represents. We we all the common thing that you yeah. shopping with us from the beginning and the, beginning. And the sneakers is what starts the conversation. But then it the, leads to seeing the six yeah. degrees yeah. Of, of separation 100%. and where that can lead into. Now, I want to second what you said, because in the league, there's two different types of people. And I told you I want to talk about this a little bit. You have 100%. people that go to the league and then they create this like crew of guys that roll everywhere with them. And some of those guys don't ever really have roles. They kind of just drain. The entourage. Right. And then you have guys who go to the league and they get married, start a family, and really just buckle down and focus. And that's the route that you took. And I've seen people go the other route. And sometimes, you know, they give them certain roles or they start a small business within that and they help them build up. But I've also seen it where they drain it and the guy loses everything. And then those guys aren't around anymore. And you just have to be really careful about which route you take in the league in order to prolong your success out of the league. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you were smart about that situation and you like went the more serious route of really buckling down and trying to figure out like, okay, this doesn't last forever. And you understood that and knew that and knew that your degree didn't matter because you're not doing daycares like Larry said. (laughs) And so you you actually buckle down and gain knowledge, built relationships. And it's like, it's scary because I hate watching the other yeah. side happened. Mm-hmm. Yep. Man, and then I actually just, bro, I spent self, I spent time with myself, you yeah. know, and try yeah. to figure out who I, who I really am. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Like, um, and a lot of these dudes, like when they around so many people, you hearing everybody else's opinions. You right. Know, you can't even mm. think for yourself. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. You're not even in control yeah, of your, your own ear, thoughts. Just talking yeah. crazy. Yeah. 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 I mean, you yeah. hearing everybody else's Gassing opinions. you up. Like, mm-hmm. you know, every time I came to y'all shop, who was I with? Nobody. I was by myself. Yeah. You know you literally yeah. were by yourself. Yeah, all the time. I was by myself every single time. But I, but I like being by myself. I like me. You know, yeah, I like myself. Yeah, yeah. You know, and yeah. I like to, I like to, to be in control of my thoughts and mm. to hear what God is telling mm. me to do and Preach. stuff like that. That's bro. powerful. I like to move. You know, according to Him. Right. You know. Right. But if you're around so many people, how are you able to do that? You got the other guy on the yeah, shoulder telling you the you opposite. Know, you, you Let's know go I mean? do this. Let's go do yeah. that. Yeah. Let's go you, turn you, up. You, you're not even able to make your own moves. Like, unless you have people like Larry got my best interest. Yeah. 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 Unless you got have my good best people. Interest, yeah. Right. Right. But y'all pour into each other. Like minded. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Y'all pour into each other. A lot of times, like you know, we are alphas, right? A lot of times, we pouring into other people. You know, but ain't yeah. nobody really pouring, pouring back, back into yeah. us, right? Yeah. Well, cause you're but the But this is where, like, I told y'all at the beginning, like, y'all are friends that did business together. That's hard to do. You know so, what I'm saying? Yeah. Because you really got to pour back and forth into each other, right? right. You know? And, and, and check egos. Yes. And check egos. You know what I mean? I yeah. think of, like, you know, the boy bands and, and the common problem where, like, everybody's jealous of Justin Timberlake. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But it's like, I just... We, I feel like we all shine in our own way, mm-hmm. and I, I, you know, I feel like Scotty's Justin Timberlake in his own way, but I have my own <laughs> yeah. things, and and yeah. so does Ian, and so I feel like that's where you have to make it work is by, like you said, discovering yeah. yourself. I'm mm-hmm. so comfortable with who I am and my brands that I choose to wear, and right, the thing yeah. that it's like can nobody take that away take from me yeah. or yeah. make me yeah. feel any way about you. it, and and same for yeah. Scotty and Ian. Yeah. So we can comfortably just be ourselves. <laughs> There's not a competition between us yeah, you know and I'm what sure, I mean and I'm sure y'all can be real with each other and be like man, man Scotty or Larry man I ain't really fuck with that oh, yeah. you know what I'm saying oh we do oh, yeah, we, yeah, yeah, we do yeah. all the time yeah. all bro the time. and that's real friends bro yeah. I had a bro I, I had a I got a boy that he he go to the wine his name Dan he go to the wine spot with me all the time you know we around I need these to go there. Man, come on, for real. <laughs> we had this conversation. He's like, I just drink wine. On yeah. 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 I mean, I wish we had a bottle of wine on yeah. here. Yeah. 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 But, time, bro, like, time. we 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 was at these wine spots, and, it, and, bro, it's around a lot of, like, high net worth people. Like, yeah. Yeah. some people, billionaires in there and stuff like that. And we, you know, I go I go in there, I'm being myself. Like, you know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Y- y'all know why I'm here? Like, yeah. yeah. You know, like, I'm, I'm not lower than y'all, yeah. you know? Yeah. So, um, but... I said something one time we was we was talking about some investing in the wine and stuff like that. And I didn't even realize I said this, but I felt like, you know, my oppressed self came back 
to me. And I was, I think I made a comment saying like, oh, like, you know, I ain't got it like y'all and stuff like yeah. that. I went back in the car. My boy was like, bro, I ain't fuck with that. Like, bro, you, 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 you in there. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. You got to see that at the table. Right, yeah. right, bro. I don't want to never hear you say no shit like that again. And him telling me that and checking me like that, I was like, okay, bro, that's, that's a real friend. Yes. Yes. That's some yes. real yes. shit. Yeah. yeah. That's crazy. Because a lot of people wouldn't do that. that. No. Yeah. Yo, that's yo. crazy. I mean, we, we have So I know faces. y'all do that. We you do. know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. yeah, we do a lot. And it's one of those things. It happens more frequently now just because we have a lot of things going on and things are growing. Social medias are growing. Opportunities are happening at the door, you know, like that. So sometimes you can get to that kind of notch, mm -hmm. but then you have one of us to kind of like come mm -hmm. on down. Because yeah. one of the things that a lot of people say in the comments and when they meet us is like, you guys, your humility is very awesome you're humble you're like the same you're people we yes. watch on youtube and when i we want meet you in person yeah. i want to give you that same energy yeah. yes. forever man like yeah. i built this platform to help people and i built this platform to give insight on just any and everything i can that can help everybody better themselves whether it's business yeah. spiritual physical like yeah. you name it like the the list goes on but it all goes on in a positive manner right and as long as you can always understand what the actual goal is every time and check yourself or have people mm -hmm. around you to check mm -hmm. yourself because sometimes it's hard to check your own self yeah sometimes i'll feel a certain way and then i'll open up my little jesus calling app for the day and read my little thing and i'm like yep. thanks jesus right, yeah. on, right <laughs> on time <laughs> brought me back down to reality yeah. right yeah. On 100%. Time, man. 100%. it's just one of those little things that i personally think the way we carry ourselves is going to get us further. Oh, a hundred percent and i man i've seen it and i've what i don't know when the last time i've really been around y'all you know on a consistent daily basis right, right. i seen it from afar because you know how you can tell from the fruits mm -hmm, from from mm -hmm. and from the resume mm -hmm, you right. know all this shit not happening just because y'all got money or, or because you know what i'm <laughs> yeah, saying yeah. like y'all truly care about helping people mm -hmm. you know through shoes or through fashion or through this podcast yeah and that's how you know people really become whatever they think successful is or success is so i mean i think you know i, I was able to see that shit without even seeing y'all yeah, right, you know right. like the dms yeah. are getting more yeah, and more yeah. frequent every day about oh, like guys know. i put on y'all's channel and just you the guys motivation. literally yes, help things every day 100%. and it's not yeah. even through sneakers like some yeah. people yeah. just got might be going through a divorce 100 mm -hmm. one guy yeah. might have lost his child through court like whatever the snare or some people are just trying to find the love to get up and just do what they love mm -hmm. yeah and they tell me that everything out of love they yes. watch the podcast yeah. they watch the youtube and and that's the drive that helps them and it's like yep. it's crazy yeah, yeah, I, lo yeah. I love it. A yeah. former teacher. He was uh, just recently. I got one. He was a former teacher, and he finally like quit and yeah. opened a vintage store. Yeah, yeah, that's that's yeah. Yeah. And now he's like killing it. Just shout doing, out to him, yeah. doing, yeah. doing what he loves and to do. And and found his IG. Yeah. No, yeah. 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 Shout yeah. him out. No, for real. Still. Shout out to bro, man. For Waking real. up every day doing something that's he loves. Time. That's yeah. that's yeah. different. That's my number one thing because I'll never forget when I learned about the word entrepreneur in third grade. And that that person, you know, d builds their own. And I always knew that I would be that guy. I always knew I would work for myself. I, I just I always knew that. And it's just one of those things where the freedom that like a lot of people will judge, like, why do you all dress like that? Why do yeah, you all? Bro, yeah. the freedom I that can. I have yeah. to wake up at 35, 36 years old and put on whatever clothes I want and show up to yeah, that that's freedom, fine. that that's that success to Larry, me. It's yesterday, not a money. Remember, Larry and I were walking downstairs and there was a group of business corporate guys yeah. all in suits just sitting around and Larry's like, I'm glad I don't have to do that every day. Yeah. Yeah. I can choose if I want to do yeah. that, I will. I'm still you here know? in the just, same corporate building. I'm still here yes, in the same office with all yeah. of them. Thank you. That's what I was about to say. And it all goes back to the the art piece from Captain Casual. Yeah. 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 It's yeah. like, uh, what was it? You guys are taking, how was it once about the suits? The, the suits. Yeah. Oh, the guy. Everyone wants to, something about being a boss until you realize they work for the guy in sweats. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Every, guys everyone sweats. thinks the guy in the suit is the boss until, until they, they, they realize yeah. he works for the guy in yeah. the sweats. And that's definitely us people are mm -hmm. working for the guy in in, in sweats over here <laughs> no, bro. At the end, you know and i and i see it every day when i pass the halls and, and people look at us in here like as if, why get, are y'all in here they, I love that they, they less, every less single than. day they look at me like i'm somebody who was shopping in the mall and i accidentally in stumbled here. inside like, this building and i'm lost like and you don't belong here yes. Yes. every day every day and like I, you and should I love be in this corporate and office like, and not that only that me. but we yeah. get noise complaints and we'll go over there and be like yo just let us know for being too loud They're like okay cool and then yeah. we, security comes in again i'm like Come talk to me. Like, why y'all yeah. guys got to be telling yeah, on right, me like right. this? We're just Man, I, here conducting I love business. that feeling, bro. I get oh, yeah. that shit a lot too. When I when I wear around my Apex shirts and stuff yeah. like that, I'll yeah. see like the people always ask me, "Oh, you work there?" 
I'm like, no. Like, what you mean? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah. I, like, my why, answer. Why, why, why I got to be the one that right. worked there? My right. answer you know is always yes. something like that. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's what yeah. I always say. That's what I, I copy Larry always, on that yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Hey, man, we're curious. Something like that. And they'll laugh. Yeah. Like, what does that mean? I'm the owner. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. Disrespect me so in front of my friends. Do you feel Do you feel what you're doing right now is where you're supposed to be? Or do you have other things that you've always wanted to do that are in motion? Or... Yeah, for sure. I mean, what I'm doing right now is definitely where I'm supposed to be. I'm definitely in line with God's vision as well, too. Mm, amen. You know what I'm saying? For sure, 100 percent. One, because I'm helping people and I'm helping athletes as well, too. Mm -hmm. A section of where we going with this or where I'm going with this. So I'm starting a nonprofit called Athlete Investment Academy. Let's go. And teaching these athletes. Well, really teaching these athletes like the ins and outs of different types of investments and financial literature. And when I say athletes, it doesn't only have to be NFL players yeah, or yeah, NBA players. Yeah, and, right? yeah. Mm -hmm. and then also like pickleball players. I want to bring investments, mm -hmm. a commonly used word in the locker room, bro. Mm -hmm. Like that shit should be like, that should be the competition. Yeah. You yeah. Know not, the what I'm not the bottles, right? Like teams, teams should be sitting around like on some round table stuff. Yeah. Like, yo, I got this deal. Like we could all pitch in this. We could buy this property. Bro, imagine, we if, could... bro, imagine if we had a private, a private equity company only for like the people in the NFL. Yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Or, It'd be or powerful. Or some, yeah, and then bro, put like, all that money together powerful. and change. But communities. wasn't that kind of what Des was trying to do? The players, in a mm. sense, in a sense. But what he's trying to—he's not necessarily trying to pool their money together. No, more. He's trying to pool their ability to keep the money they make off of their likeness together in mm. one right. pool. Yeah, so yeah, basically, yeah. saying instead of you guys getting paychecks from here, here, and here for people who are profiting off of your likeness, right. you can drop your shirt or do this over here, and then you get to keep all that money to yourself. And he's basically trying to create a group of like, right. we should all do this over here. I guess we'll have that Keep conversation whenever yeah, we get yeah. them on here 100 yeah. but it's yeah. like uh like what you're saying it's like people go to school high school or whatever but they don't teach you about real life people go play ball yeah. but they don't teach you about yeah, yeah. ball after life exactly so i was exactly. gonna ask you that when you when you mentioned that because that when we were talking about this earlier um as far as like the young cats who are trying to figure out what they're doing and, and after they get out of college or after they get out of the league but um i thought that the nfl has like some some financial literature type classes yeah. mandatory I mean, stuff yeah. like He's, that shit i ain't seen it yeah. Yeah. you know what i mean i like, mean that's a that's a that's, that's a, a great thing. point to yeah. make because I mean, from I me from it. that standpoint i'm under the impression that the nfl made some strides to make some mandatory financial nah, literature bro. classes or whatever it may be nah, you so i, I I and think I don't you're wanna, onto you know, yeah, and, I'm yeah, not, yeah. and I don't want to talk bad about the NFL. No, I mean, bro, it gave me the platform to yes. be able to yeah. correct to to actually put this on and do yeah. this right. right. So I mean, I've, I bro, I love the NFL but and facts stuff are like facts. that. But yeah. like, I got to put myself in their shoes too, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And putting myself in their shoes, like, why would I teach these athletes, right? <laughs> to to really build generational wealth with their money so they don't need me. Yes. Right. You know what that's, I'm saying? That's the entire... They want to rely on you. Yes. it's ne What you just explained to the for the NFL and players is yeah. literally like how the world works. That's what I was... Bro, and that's then, how that you take that to like the government and the yes. regular population. Right. Right. That is their thought process. So they give you this school, they give yes. you this and make it feel like you're doing this and, and climbing that's the ranks. Was, but they're, they're keeping you yeah. right where they want bro. you to be i was about to ask like do, do you guys think that's that's true that there's a reason why we're not taught all these things bro, in school, school absolutely school is like bro if if school was really supposed to be for these kids and stuff mm -hmm. i just said uh probably like 20 minutes ago that everybody have gifts right and it's up right. to us to find them why don't school help us expand on our gifts mm -hmm. like say i was never into like literature or literature history or whatever, whatever or history is, yeah. and i bro i was big in math yeah why not let me just go crazy right. on math? Yeah, yeah, that that's you what know you're what? gifted with. Yeah, because that's my gift. Like, yeah. I was huge on math. You know what I'm saying? That's what I love to do. If schools was really about, like, it might be a kid that's fire in art. Mm -hmm. Why don't we just spend his whole life? Why? I mean, obviously, you have to tap into the, all yeah. these to, other to places. the basics. But, right. Yeah, to the basics. But why don't we just let him just go crazy yeah. with these art, you know, the art yeah. projects but and stuff like that? But he shouldn't be a that. senior in high school taking pre cal classes. When you feel what I'm saying? Like, he needs to know home, math home, and home all ec. this stuff. Yeah. Like, like, Larry, why did, why did we have to yesterday look up the uh, on the house stuff? about the uh, capital gains tax yeah. like yeah. Yeah, well, I should have been told that if you 
two hundred fifty thousand yeah. or less. So whenever I sell a house, you don't have to pay capital Absolutely. gains. Like, exactly. why am I looking that up? Yeah. Why didn't school exactly. tell me that? Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah, that's because, crazy. Yeah, so uh, I, I, it, it's interesting, and I heard this one time. It's like you have to you spend uh, you know your whole life learning things till you're eighteen or twenty two if you go to college, and then you have to spend the next several years unlearning a lot of that stuff you that to. you were taught yeah. and a lot yeah. of those things that you were you know, those systems that were put in place to keep I didn't learn anything because I dropped out. <laughs> I mean, I was, you have to unlearn from a lot bad. of people. Yeah. You know, yeah, you to, yeah. your parents, yes, you know yes, what I'm yes, saying? Yes, like, yes, your absolutely. friends that you yes. was around, like, you have to do a lot I'm of I'm fortunate enough because my dad was an entrepreneur, so he has, you know, right. seven, yeah, eight right. different businesses, so I'm watching him do these different things and delegating duties to different people and building those people right. up in the position of power to be successful and then, of course, making me work from the ground up. So it's like, I was more in a structured area where I was fortunate enough to, like, see it first hand I just chose to be bad and and go a different route if I would have just done as he said and listened to him I I don't know who's to say but, uh, but eventually you figured it out and yeah. tapped into you know and, and start actually learning from yeah you maybe you wouldn't have like, appreciated it, just, it as much though at all yeah. and so the adversity made me stronger exactly. In a sense. exactly so that's the way I exactly. look at it but I was fortunate enough to have the entrepreneurship within mm. my family my uncle my grandpa my grand I mean everybody in a sense so yeah. not everybody has that though Mm -hmm. right right and school doesn't teach you that either and so it's yeah. like you know and then also with the with that with the athlete investment academy obviously you know it's so we're building out courses for athletes to be able to you know i have financial firms that's backing it and stuff mm -hmm. like that because i mean i don't know everything yeah you know especially about financial mm -hmm. literature i'm still learning right as well but i have two big financial firms here in the dallas area that's backing it um, right. helping us build it out on the education resources and all that That's stuff. Dope. The big grand scheme of things, what what I see happening is athletes on their social medias. Now we're talking a little bit more about investing and what we're invested in. Because, I mean, if you really think about it, right, you know, if you really think about any successful black person who you see on TV, you know, or on, on all media outlets and stuff like that, what do we think about? Like, like what's, their, what's their uh, occupation? Oh, oh yeah, yeah. yeah. They're some type of athlete, athlete, or entertainer. Rapper, athlete, entertainer, rapper, stuff like that. Singer, yeah. So imagine like me being a young black kid from the hood. Mm -hmm. You know, mom handicapped. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Stuttering problem and stuff like that. That's all I focused on. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, mm -hmm. that's that was my only way out. You know, yeah. well, I thought that was my yeah, only way. Right. Out. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. So I want to give these kids a different narrative. Like I want to paint the picture differently. That's a, yeah. You know what that's I'm saying? A, that's a big part of us too. Showing kids that you don't, you know, you don't have to go the traditional route. You know, I, you. we spoke yes. on this. We, Nike wasn't going to give us no deal. Adidas wasn't giving us no tier zero account. Yeah. You know what I mean? Right. And the fact that we were able to find our own way and still build a business out of doing what we love and, and helping back. people yeah. and giving mm -hmm. back and teaching. That's, that's the important part for me. I think I automatically think of Chameleon. Chameleon made his bread and he started a venture. Oh, you're talking like about a, Chameleon. A yeah. Chameleon. Yeah. 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 He became a venture he capitalist became a venture, with his bread. Started yeah. a VC Startup firm. Companies. And that's like me one day. Like one right, day right, I'm just yeah. an angel investor and I'm just giving people the opportunity because I always think about, man, if somebody just would have gave me a chance or just gave me 10 bands to do, I could have started a lot earlier mm -hmm. and I could have gotten a lot further faster because sometimes you just need a little help right, and everybody exactly. wants to talk about you know handouts and blah 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 but sometimes people just need a little help bro and they could be something very special if they just get a little help and that kid was me and i'm very adamant about being able to give back to those young kids who are genius in their that own way smart yeah. in their own way but just don't have a chance or just don't yeah. have the help that they need or they're just people turn their shoulder just based on where yep. they live or where mm -hmm. they go to school and it's me like and, that shouldn't be that way me and scotty were badasses at 25 but we didn't get on until we were 35 you yeah. know what i mean right, right, right. You, you know what i mean mm -hmm. we 100%. just needed a little help and nobody was there to give us that little help we could we could have been a lot further faster you know and and i want to recognize that potential in others and be able to help yeah, and we provide were, the, we were exactly. in corporate offices pitching uh powerpoints to get a to get uh people to loan us money to get spots and stuff and they just didn't see the what we had they didn't understand they didn't our concept and now yeah. these people who told us no or try to like they were racist and try to do say racial things to us yeah. thinking we weren't gonna guys, like say no we're, we're, we're worried that you're gonna be too urban like that, tell <laughs> putting right, it. Right. They, what you mean? Our original, yeah. The yeah. original lease we signed for our for what was gonna be our first store. They told us in the lease that we couldn't be too urban 
we needed to be like Urban Outfitters, Urban and, Zara. Outfitters and Zara. And I said, so basically you're She's afraid crazy. that we're going to bring too many people like of color people, to, the, yeah. to, the, to y'all's uh, destination. And they're like, well, no, no, no. I was like, no, that is what it is. Because I see gray. I don't, there's no color in my right, eyes. Right, like, right, everybody's right. Every, equal to me. And then that's when we were just like, give me us, give us our down payment back. And they gave us a 20K yeah. back and we ripped up the contract and said, never mind. And then we ended yeah. up going to the Galleria. But it's like, I hate that people paint the picture of certain things like that when that's not how it should be at all. No. And the one person, who, and the mm -hmm. one person who saw our vision and gave us the opportunity is just so proud of us you know what i mean right. like she's so proud of like yeah. what we've become and what we've turned into because she's she, the only one that believed she was us. the only one of who course my dad shot. who helped us out to yeah. get to get there he did yeah, yeah. I, mean, I remember your, I remember. your, your parent you know your parents yeah. are always gonna push exactly. you They're on your by side. default but yeah. your parents aren't always down to help you know right. what i mean right. and so people around us and the closest ones to us knew what we were capable of and knew what we could do and, uh, you know, I'm just glad that we're here to be able to talk about it and say we did it. There yeah. was just a lot of hoops and obstacles along yeah. the way. Like I'm talking several different meetings, with all sorts of people. And, and still, just, we still <laughs> have a lot of hoops and <laughs> obstacles oh, we yeah. jump Every through. Day. And it's like yeah. people still want to little bro us. Man, I'm just happy that I was able to, to witness that shit and yeah. to yeah. see it. Straight you up. know what I'm saying? Like, you know, in any part, you know, that I can, you know, help out in, send people here. I'm, You know I'm always going to do oh, it, good. bro. Always gonna That's do it love. just out of love, That's bro. Love. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Not yep. even don't need nothing back. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all support me, bro. Y'all got me on this show, bro. I appreciate y'all so of much. Of course. Like, so let me let me fire off some quick points for the young listeners. There's probably some of our listeners out there who may have a a, a speech impediment that yeah. they feel like is hindering. Um, their ability to do business or speak to people or hold rela or hold uh, conversation. What is your your message to those guys? Man, honestly, bro, that that was uh, that was what holding me back from from starting my podcast and speaking on stage with a lot of people. Right, is this internal fear that I have mm -hmm. or that I've had had yeah. right that I yeah. had to unlearn or that I had to get over from from speaking in front of these big group of people just because I grew up with a speech impediment. So I grew up with a stuttering problem my whole life. Like literally, like from the time that I could speak, I was stuttering, you know? Yeah. And it was to the point that like, man, I used to be in class and when they used to call on me to read out of the textbooks, yeah. I used to leave the classroom sometimes because I, bro, I used to stutter so bad that I thought it was disrespectful that the teacher would ask, you. would even yeah, ask right, me, like, come on now, you know, to read, you know, like, like yeah. bro, what you, you know what I mean? Like, yeah, like, like, I'm like they're picking, you yeah, set exactly. me up, <laughs> yeah, bro. I'm one of the only black people at this Christian. I mean, we had a decent amount, but we see still the minorities at this Christian school. Mm -hmm. And you calling on me to speak in front of all these people. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, it's like, disrespectful. Yeah, it's disrespectful. Uh, and because of that, bro, I veered away from reading a lot too. You know, I never used to read. Like, honestly, probably about a year ago is when I picked up my first book and read it, you know, all the way through, yeah, yeah. you know. But it was because I had I grew up with a speech problem, you know. Um, and honestly, bro, what, what I would say to other people is if I didn't grow up with that speech problem, I don't think I would have had this work ethic that I have now. Yeah, yeah. You know, because people was you used to judge me so bad mm -hmm. by the way that I speak that you had to overcome that I had to, it and yeah. use it against. Yeah, yeah, I, bro, I had to be the best athlete. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and yeah, now I have chip. to, yeah. I have to be the best businessman. You know, and I, and it wasn't until I pledged in a fraternity in college that I actually got comfortable speaking in front of big groups of people. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, we we pledging and. I can't really say a lot of, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but, but, you know, we we locked in, in a, you know, in the basement, a lot of people around us, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm pledging. Yeah. So yeah. y'all don't, don't know what I'm yeah, talking yeah, about. Right. Yeah, for sure. uh, and, and I'm having to recite a lot of information, mm -hmm. you know? So, and obviously I'm with somebody and usually if it's like a, if it's like a, a rhythm with it, it's easier to speak. Mm -hmm. But now, you know, I was able to overcome that and actually lead people. So it is a success story. And what I would say to these people, man, really, if you put your mind to something, you can, you can do it, bro. It, it's yeah. a quote, uh, I forget who it's by, but it's like, um, it's like, if you think you can or you think you can't, you're right. You're right. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So this whole time I was thinking I was never going to be able to speak in front of people. I was thinking I was never going to be able to, to, to be on a podcast or to mm -hmm. host a podcast or anything um, like that just because I had a speech problem. Well, you did you know, great today. I was about to say, but you proved that killed today. It. But, and then also, like, uh, I read this other book. Uh, I forget what it's called, but uh, it talks about, like, how 
you know, a lot of us have this negative voice in our head mm -hmm. and it put it in this perspective. It was like, imagine if that negative voice was a person sitting right next to you. Imagine if that negative person who tell you can't do all this shit was somebody sitting right next to you. You wouldn't be friends with this dude. Nope. You know, no, nope. You know what I mean? Yeah, you want to prove him wrong. Right, yes. right. So now I take that into account too. So anything that, you know, that I tell myself internally that I can't do, yeah. I just imagine if it if that was a person that was sitting right yeah. next to me, I was like, man, fuck you. Yeah, like, exactly. I'll, 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 I'll prove you wrong. I'll prove, prove your ass wrong. wrong. Yeah. I'm going to do this <laughs> shit now, right? <laughs> that's dope. So, that's um, dope. So yeah, bro. I love that. Yeah, that's amazing. Um, so now speaking to um, the young athlete whose yeah. dreams is to make it to the league, and we've spoke a little bit about this earlier. So what would your um, what would your advice be to the young kid wants to make it to the league? He's in college, yeah. um, and he obviously has it in his mind that he's going to the league. I don't need this degree. I don't need this yeah. education. I'm going to go to the league anyways. What is the message to him? Man, you know, it's tough. That's a tough message because I don't want to be a hypocrite, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. or or contradict myself. But you right? wish that you would have gotten something other than what you got, right? Or no? no as far as no, the degree? No, he said no. no. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, mean I guess even now I think about own. going back and getting my master's, but the only reason why I would go back if I go to SMU, it's for the relationships and the Correct. network. Yes. Yeah, you know sure. what I'm saying? Yes, yeah. Like, yeah. So that's I wouldn't the key go then, back right? and get my MBA other than the relationships. It's the relationships. Right? Yeah. But, um, man, it's it's tough. Like, I think that's a really, really tough topic that yeah. I think it needs to be a bigger dis uh, it's yeah. a personal yeah. discussion. Yeah. School, with each person school is different. just not for everybody. Right, yeah. right. So you know, some it's about people, the person. it's just not, yeah, yeah, it's not for them. And so. I don't want to be a hypocrite because I feel like whatever you do, you do need to be all in. Mm -hmm. You know, and it really... I don't think a lot of us really know how our minds work, you know, because if we think we can do something, mm -hmm. you know, you shouldn't have any doubts or you shouldn't be second guessing yourself. And if I look back, that's how I really made it, you know, keep making all these steps. It's because I dive all the way in mm -hmm. and I don't second guess myself at all. So I don't want to tell this kid who's in college, like, you know, who's thinking about going to the the NFL is like, hey, have a backup plan. Shit, I ain't had no fucking yeah, backup plan. Right, right, right? Right, right? Yeah. But also, you know, in your free time, you should educate yourself. Yeah. yeah. You know, you should start reading. Reading mm -hmm. is, bro, like, I don't know how many, if y'all read or not, bro, mm -hmm. but reading is so powerful what you get out of reading. Yeah. You know, it's three different ways to learn. You know, it's listening, seeing, and reading. Right. You know what I'm saying? Like when I picked up books, bro, everything like honestly, bro, within a matter of like two months, like everything, like the way I speak, like mm -hmm. like how I'm able to uh, articulate my words, mm -hmm. You're you know, my mental yeah. clarity, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm able to pull different words and yeah, different verbiage yes, and yes, different vocabulary. Yes. Like it's completely different. I'm way more sharp. I'm way on and I can lead people better. And like, you know, all books isn't good books. Right. You right, know what right, I'm saying? Right. So you really got to do your research on read good books and when, read. I, and when I pick a book or who I listen to you know who do you listen to is huge for me like yeah. I'm not going to listen to somebody that's not that's not actually doing it themselves yeah. right mm -hmm. if yeah. I'm talking to somebody about shoes I'm going to hit y'all up <laughs> yeah. if I'm talking yeah. to somebody about business advice I'm going to hit y'all up like y'all yeah. started a business y'all ran it y'all scaled it if I talk to somebody about leading, I'm going to hit y'all up, yeah, right? Yeah. And same with me. I mean, if people's asking me about different opinions, about running the gym, leading people, stuff like That's that. That's your they expertise. Hit me up. Hit up. Yeah. But if they want to ask me about, you know, investing in real estate and all this stuff, I mean, I've done it a couple times, yeah. but I'm not an expert at it. So don't come to me. I'm going to send you to somebody <laughs> the else. They can. You know, yeah, yeah I'm going to send you That's to the, the expert. actual expert, yes. right? I think yes. we do so much of learning from, you know, uh, people that's not – actually experts you got your uncle telling you <laughs> yeah, advice yes. your cousin your mom dad unless they and, and scotty said it you know his dad giving him advice yeah. like that's that was an expert you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying for sure but imagine if he wasn't actually doing it himself and we get these people that's trying to pour into us mm -hmm. it's like that's yeah, not okay. actually doing it <laughs> himself yeah. you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so yeah so though that's how i also look at books yeah. it's about who who wrote the book you know a lot of times you know bill gates and Donald Trump or all these guys, none of them dudes wrote their own books. Mm, yeah, exactly. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> so how can I read this book and learn something from it if you didn't even write it? Right, you know? right, right. Like, right. Makes sense. You was talking to somebody else. They're and they, paraphrasing yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. So, bro, it's it's a key to how I pick up books to read. Yeah, That's dope. Yeah. That's dope. I love that. Super dope. I appreciate you, man. 
Man, been I appreciate a pleasure. Yeah, that was a nice dog, dog, man. This was definitely a I good a good chat, yeah, a, a great private conversation. Uh, we may even have to continue it. Um, I want to do an episode of this. And, and yes, yeah, we're going to come I fuck with the watch. Oh, y'all matching and shit. You got the white yeah, face. Yeah, yeah, you got yeah, the yeah, white yeah, face. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. A trophy present to us. It's hard, bro. Y'all keep it up, man. I'm proud of y'all boys, bro. I'm proud of you too. Appreciate it, man. Tell them where they could find you on IG. Tell them where they could find your gym, your businesses, everything you got. Let it off. Yeah, so, I mean, y'all can find me on IG at uh, K-A-Y underscore Black Simba or just search Kayvon Frazier. Um, my gyms, is they all call APEC. One is APEC.BuildForward. We're changing that to APEC Prosper soon. APEC Fort Worth, APEC Tyler is the other one. So, awesome. Um, Dope. Yeah, cool, man. Yeah. Well, I love you, big dog. I appreciate you coming. Man, man. I appreciate yeah, you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, bro. Thanks a lot, man. All right. All right. We're out. We're out.